guys, we are back in Python, and we are doing Battleship. As you can see, I have 53% of this done. Yesterday, while I was doing it, my power went out for a brief second. Uh, I think the AC overloaded it, so I lost the video. It's un it it's there, but I can't access it. The file format's messed up or something along that line. So we're going to just go ahead and restart it <laughs> again. Uh, but yeah, so we're going to restart out. We'll just be re resetting this half of the code as I go. So um, uh, this first one, we're not doing anything. So basically, if I remember correctly, we're creating kind of a our own mock battleship. So here it's asking us to create a variable called board and set it equal to an empty list. That's all we need to do there. Cool. All right. And then let's go ahead actually and copy this because I um so we're going to create a for loop uh, in our 5x5 five five grid here. And it's going to be in the range for i in range of 0 to 5. That's basically saying we want this to go 5 times starting at 0. Hey! Sorry, the little cats are getting, the kitten's getting picked on. Uh, anyhow, so for, uh, I, we want to, inside the loop, we want to print out, excuse me, rather, we want to add to board the board, board.append. Uh, o times five. And I originally tried to times five in it, uh, at the end, but unfortunately, um, it didn't work properly. So let's return outside the function. No. Board dot append o. Times five. So let's. Uh, luckily, we already did this. So apparently, I need to put this in brackets because this is a list that we're adding t to it. Why is this a return? Let's see. Print. Oh, print board. It's asking us to print it. Actually, it's not asking us to do either, if I remember correctly. So let's go ahead and take that out. There we go. So um, we're not actually returning anything right here quite yet. So we're just adding to the list. So now it's going to ask us to print it. So we're going to print the board. And now it should print out five by five uh, O's. And you see right there, we have. 25 O's. We haven't stacked them yet, though. All right. Cut this out. All right. So, first, delete your existing print statement. Good. Uh, then define a function called def print board. It's a def print underscore board with a single argument board. Inside the function, write a for loop that iterates through each row in board. And each row in board and print it to the screen. So for i in board, how did I do it before? Did I do it in range or for i in board? Oh yeah, that works too. Uh, print i. Uh, call function of board, make sure it works. All right, so my cat's going crazy on the catnip right now. All right, so print uh underscore board so we're gonna call this right now let's put a space in here break it up a little bit so print board and we're calling it on our board list so now it should print five 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 and drop down frying board don't forget your colon and there we go so we're part way there all right now it wants us to use we're going to try and clean it up a little bit using uh, something called a join function so we can see above here that how it's how it's used so let's just kind of kind of go ahead and go from there so we're gonna say I print I dot join board and see if that does it list object has no attribute join oh excuse me dot join I I and then they wanted us to have an an empty space, so just like this. 
So you see it took out the kind of the array brackets and it cleaned it up at an empty space. Cool. All right, so define two new functions, random row and def column. So def random underscore row board and we're gonna have a def random underscore column and that's going to take in board as well and then each one of these are going to use they already supplied it up here if you forget how to come get from a library so from the random library we're importing random int so that's why we're going to be able to use this right now we're going to say return rand int between the zero and the length of the board minus one the reason it's minus one is because length doesn't start at zero it starts at one and when we're getting the index when we're using this for index points in a list or an array or anything of like that it, that starts at zero so we have to minus one to get either we'll get a index out of bounds or array out of bounds there um, and then we're going to do the same thing for this so return rand int and same thing it's uh because it's zero comma length of the board minus one and call f call each function on the board so let's call it now so we have random underscore row board and then we have random uh, underscore column board and let's see what's going on here make sure we do everything correct all right cool so uh we're, we're getting there All right. Now where was I? All right. So create a new variable called guess row. So guess underscore row, and we're gonna set it. Oops, not set. Uh, we're gonna let this be an int that gets raw underscore input. And I don't remember if we did this raw if we've used raw input before, but um. I think I'm thinking of the JavaScript course, but this is kind of like JavaScript's prompt. Um, this is going to prompt something up in the browser uh, or in our IDE here, and the user will give input for that. So we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to guess the column, and it's good naming convention when you can kind of, like if I were to give this to my mother and be like, what do you think guess row does? What do you think guess column does? So if you can get it to that point, obviously you won't be able to do that every time, but an application like this is designed for a user. So if you can get this to work and so to the point of where even your variables kind of make sense to the average person, it's a good good start. And that's my point is I like guess row and guess column and ship row and ship column. These are good names. So uh, let's go three and three. So you see we got our input. We haven't done anything with it yet, though. All right, now it wants us to print the value of guess of ship column. So print ship underscore column, print ship underscore row. And I think the next section is where I'm at. So three and th three. So it, uh, it was basically saying that the ship row is four and one. All right, yeah, now we're back to where I was at. So... We're saying, I believe I added this, so let's check that out. All right, so add an else if, I was leaving there. So add an else if, print out you missed my battleship. Add an else if, print out you missed my battleship. If guess wrong, do this. Add an else under the if we wrote in the previous step. Okay. Oh, here we go. Some, somehow we should. All right, so on line 29, add an if and guess the row. So we're adding if guess underscore row is exactly equal to ship row and guess underscore column is exactly equal to ship column. We wanted to print some shit out. So, um, so print... And then just because I always seem to have spelling errors, I'm going to copy and paste this in here. So we're going to say three. Oops. 
make sure you enter in a proper integer so that it was two and one so we didn't sink the battleship all right now we're going to add an else statement that says else print and again i'm just going to copy this over because i've had so many errors with uh, things being misspelled or not punctuated properly all right so else you missed my battleship set the list element at guest rel guest column to x and then we are going to say we're going to print that you missed my battleship and now we need to override whatever the board is for that so we're saying board and we're going to say how do we want to do this so row first so uh board guess underscore row comma guess underscore column equals equals or equals x rather as the last time your else statement print print uh call print board all right so print underscore board and now with our new slightly altered board we can see the x of where they've already guessed so let's guess three so three sh and three should be i'm pointing the screen like you guys can see uh you missed my battleship list indices must be integers not tuples All right, tuples are two numbers. So, oh, whoops. All right, so um, this is my fault. Uh, I basically tried to put it as like coordinates when we're actually the way the way we're doing it is it's different. They're different. The there's there's like five arrays instead of two, and we're trying to say get this point, this array, and in this array get that. So this should fix it right here. So three and three. Bam, so we missed, there's our three. So zero, one, two, three, zero, one, two, three, bam. So that's not it. So cool. Um, so the outer list and the inner list is how they would uh, explain it. All right, so add an if statement that is nested under else. All right, so if. Like this example, and it should check if guest row is not in range at five and guest column is not in range at five. So if guest underscore row is greater than or equal to range, greater, greater than range underscore range five. Or guess there's a column is greater than range five. Print and again, just copying this over. Actually, we'll just copy it with the quotes. I know for the colon. After your new if statement, add an else that contains your existing handler for an incorrect guess. No. So if guess row is okay. And then we're gonna add our else here, and we have to indent all this. Let's see if we made any mistakes. So we're gonna say again. Well, do, actually, let's do one and one. So we miss, you miss my battleship, and it's within the range, so everything works. So that's cool. And we know it works because it's an else statement under this if statement. So everything's good to go. All right, add an elif to see if the guest location already has an x in it. So uh, let's see here. Where is it? I believe this is the correct spot. 
elif. Um. So elif, our board guess row guess column, already equals equals an x. Print. You guessed that one already. Oh, uh, let's try zero zero zero. You missed my battleship. There's four four. So looks like everything's going well. Thoroughly test your game. Make sure to try a variety of different guesses and look for any errors in syntax or logic. So pause this video and do all that. That's not something I'm, I'm gonna do. Um, well, you're kind of there. The only thing we really need to add to this is probably a while loop, so that we can continue doing until we meet. Uh, win condition. If I had to guess, that's what we'll be doing next. So we missed. There's our four and four. All right. So add a for loop that repeats the guessing and checking part of your game for four turns, like the example above. All right. So where does it? All right, so this is where we want to do. This is like the bulk of our our board here, our uh, battleship. So we're gonna say four turn in range four print turn comma turn plus one. So let's player know what turn they are on, indent everything, so it should be repeated. All right, so we just need to do that, and I, if ever, if if everything I said is correct, so this says it's turn one, so we're going two and two. You missed my battleship, so cool. Turn two, so three and three, cool. We're on turn three now, four and four. Missed my battleship and one and one. Is my battleship. All right, so it seems like our turn method is working. So now we're gonna see add an if statement to check see if the user added guesses. So we're gonna s how do we want to put it under the else that accounts for misses? Uh, so let's see, you missed my battleship. All right, and then we'll say if. Alright, so if turn is equal, equal to 3, print game over. So we know it's 1, 4, so let's just try and make sure it works. So 2, 2, 3, 3. And then turn 4, 4, 4. Game over, and it prints the board one last time. Cool. So add a break under the win condition to end the loop after win. All right, and so we're adding a break right here to break the loop. Um, the reason for that is so that the game doesn't continue running, and we should probably do the same thing for game over here too. So let's go ahead and see that it works. So we're going to say 3-0. Congratulations, you sunk my battleship. It doesn't print again. We're good to go. So let's just save submit. Let's try it one more time. There's our congratulations, you sunk my battleship. And extra credit. Dang, this might be something we'll do in the future. Um, actually, let me pause the video. I'll come back to this and I'll actually do this extra credit. So I'll, uh, I'll continue on in just a minute. 